Okay, welcome back to EMC World. Uh, this is exclusive coverage, Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage, The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined with my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. We have a many time Cube guest, Prasad Rampali, the Senior Vice President of EMC's Solutions Group. Prasad, welcome back. Thank you, glad to be here. <laughs> yeah, so this is, uh, let's see, I don't know which EMC world it is for you, but we're, I've lost track, but uh, a couple anyway. Yeah, and, definitely uh, a couple, <laughs> and we've been on others too, so. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, the so last had, one was Sapphire. That's right, we're at Sapphire, yeah. and yeah, so yeah. you've had some time now in your role, and you know, we've talked a number of times with you about how you wanted to advance the vision of the whole solutions group um, and, and, and bring some of your knowledge and discipline and process uh, to that. So let's give us an update on where the solutions group is at and what kind of impact you guys are having. Yeah, thanks for asking the question. I mean, I didn't you know, lob that one to you, but um, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, uh, almost two years ago, right? Uh, the focus of the solutions team has been to shift left, work very closely with the business units, and work very closely with the uh, technical partners, the ISV ecosystem, and create those integration points of incremental value. Right, uh, that drives some unmet needs uh, into a solution space. And so that's what we've been doing, working with Oracle, Microsoft, SAP, and now increasingly the service providers and ensuring that in the way they're looking at meeting their specific use cases, uh, we are tying our storage as a seamless part of the stitching fabric through this mechanism of integration building blocks, right? Yes. And uh, so we made some tremendous progress. I'm pretty thrilled to actually report that uh, we've got a number of uh, customers who are very happy with the solutions we've provided. Mm. Yeah. Good. So, so I'd talk about, we, you know, we've been talking about the services angle for three years, and we actually started the servicesangle.com blog a while ago, and when no one was really talking about the services, we've talked about the disruption in services in the past on theCUBE. So I got to ask you, currently right now, the conversations here at EMC World is clearly business value, right? So um, that's, you know, check the box, yep. transformation, rah rah, uh, all that's good stuff. But really, the, the, the other conversation is faster time to value with cloud, it's incremental proof points where in the old days it was, you know, roll out a big project plan and then bang, it was installed. Now it's like there's little checkpoints where you can actually see the proof points faster. So that requires a lot more rapid rapid engineering. Rapid so and yeah. I got to ask you, it's, it's also, it's more getting more complicated too. As the, as the transformation architectures are being reshifted and recasted. So what are you guys doing? What's the update on EMC side? I know you've had some uh, engineering centers, excellence centers. What other things are happening within EMC to try to make the proof of concepts and the, the engineering of these solutions yeah, faster? Yeah, great question. Uh, thanks again for asking that. I mean, you guys are perfect <laughs> complicated. That's why we put you in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we've been working on creating a, a value prop uh, really at, at attacking this whole time to solutions thing, right? So we've established a core infrastructure which is called the VLAB, and the hands-on lab out here is really a, one specific example of that. And what it is, is uh, a distributed infrastructure for demoing our solutions. And uh, we want to be able to have customers have self-subscription, or even partners, and say, hey, I want to look at uh, how VPlex does active-active uh, -active data center uh, replication on a VMAX. Well, we have that capability on a demo cloud as part of a service manifest like the catalog, and you can come in if you have uh, the appropriate access and uh, click into those specific use cases and actually see that to your own satisfaction. Now it does more than that, besides just a, 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 you know, a webcam, you can actually interact with it, uh, you can uh, implement certain configurations and see how it works. So the service catalog thing is obviously important. You got automation, all these kind of things that are hard to just roll out in a demo. So you obviously have those capabilities. So I want to ask you, um, what's kind of turnkey now? What have you guys uh, abstracted away from a complexity standpoint around the services besides the catalog? And two, what other new high level services do you see happening that are on your radar right now? Okay. So. Uh, in the service provider space, uh, specifically, uh, we are looking at services that these SPs need, and the top of mind service that always comes up is backup as a service. Increasingly, a lot of data is going to the, to the hosting environment, the hybrid cloud, or even the public cloud, and, and the question then is, okay, how do you enable various use cases on, on backup, uh, backup from a, a remote site to a, a central site that the SP might have? Uh, back up from a end user environment to a SP environment. So we have these various use cases in all those 
uh, specific scenarios, uh, we do need to create a very reliable, scalable backup as a service capability that can be, by the way, monitored and measured and metered for appropriate billing purposes. So it's not just implementing backup as we would for data protection with uh, our Avamar data domain capabilities in the enterprise, but take it the extra yard on cross hybrid cloud use cases as well as the core essence of monitoring, metering, and billing. How does that affect your ecosystem? Because again, that was the other thing that's come up again and again. The industry and the ecosystem, both technically and on the business side, relative to your providers, solution providers out there. Well, I think it's actually opening up the ecosystem in ways that uh, we hadn't envisioned uh, because a lot of the integration that we now do uh, is no longer with the traditional uh, Oracle with our man for backup in the enterprise, as an example, but uh, looking at the Telstras and uh, other service providers who have their own context of their operating environments that we need to now integrate into. So, uh, in the case of uh, this particular service provider, we have seven or eight different data centers where we are deploying this backup as a service capability, and it's not just sufficient to do it at one data center at a time, we have to create this uh, backup grid, if you will, that is uh, a core middleware service that uh, has resiliency and failover between these backup environments and operates like one capability for this SP environment. So, that's kind of where we're going with this. Prasad, I wonder if we could talk about a little bit more about your business. I mean, every, <coughs> every business leader has their metrics, right? So, what kinds of metrics have, have you instituted in terms of measuring the success of your operation? I mean, you're not a P&L, right? Uh, right. So, how do you measure the success, um, either both internally or externally? Well, that's a great question. Uh, solutions and their measurement has to first tie with some level of inspection and, and, and measurability in the tracking system, which starts with how you kind of win a deal uh, with the sales force, right? So, uh, we are tying uh, our top line impact with uh, enabled uh, revenue influence, okay? And uh, we are actually embarking on this notion of uh, sales campaigns that are going to be entirely solutions based. And for each of these solutions campaigns, uh, at the time of the particular deal, or the sale, we are going to be tracking uh, the specific use case uh, and the specific clay, uh, which is our solution that was accountable for that design win. So um, we have a direct me method of tracking what the, the solution play is and then tying that back to uh, how many of those did you make. And vSpecs is, is kind of the poster child for us. Yeah. Uh, vSpecs is entirely a solution implementation in the channel. And uh, just in 2012, uh, we had about 1,200 solutions that were implemented as part of our design wins. And we've completely exceeded any goal that we had. Um, we, we had a $30 million design goal for 2012, uh, and we exceeded by orders of magnitude, because we were new, we were experimenting with it. So this whole idea of solution-based selling hunts, uh, we've got a measurement system, uh, we then have the ability to say, okay, what solutions are actually working, and should we do something else and so on. So it's an entire system and feedback that really starts with can you measure, inspect, and feedback to the engineering team that's designing it. With such a large customer base, you must have you know, more demand than supply. So how do you scale to, to meet that demand? Oh yeah, that's a great question because you're right. Uh, the portfolio of, of how you manage solutions is uh, uh, an unend unending task. And uh, really what we have is, is the beginnings of what we call a governance structure inside the EMC where we have different business units as well as a sales team that come together and uh, they establish the priorities of what I go build. And uh, I can't say that it's picture perfect, but uh, we are getting there. Uh, so our primary focus is uh, in the service provider space, like I was saying, uh, then in the channel space with vSpecs, and then in the enterprise space, it's really Oracle, Microsoft, and SAP. Uh, and after that, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, how about this whole, we talk here a lot about software-defined storage, and, and have you started to work on, on software-defined, you know, Viper-led solutions or other software-defined uh, Absolutely, solutions? you know, Viper is the best thing that happened to, to solutions. Yeah, yeah, I'll bet, because you can integrate a lot faster, right? Right, exactly, <laughs> time to solution, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, and Viper, as Amita was, uh, you know, I don't know if you saw the keynote, but yeah, Viper yeah. has got uh, RESTful APIs that essentially yeah. completely puts the semantics on the type of, uh, storage capabilities that can be ex exposed, whether it's deduping or replication or whatever. And so, uh, instead of me 
connecting to individual storage platforms and creating plugins to the VMwares, the Microsofts, and the SAPs, which I do today, uh, I can go to the Viper API and essentially create those same plugins and ensure that uh, it just works, right? Or I'm guaranteed that it just works because uh, Viper is certified to work across all the EMC platforms. So as long as I'm writing to that API, I'm good. So my problem goes away from writing to n different environments to just one, uh, which is the abstraction layer of Viper, and then extending that not bound to the context of specific applications and what they need. Uh, so, so what's your experience been so far? Because obviously you've got a lot of experience taking you know, hardened systems and making them perform, making them cost effective. I mean, there's obviously an economic component here. Um, how, what has your experience been so far with, with Viper? It's new. There's so new, new layers involved. Can they can it perform as well? Can it give the same availability or better? And talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it's 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 early days. But uh, if you uh, go to the uh, you are in the solutions pavilion. But if you go to the demo booth for Viper, we've actually worked with uh, the Viper team where the specific VMware plugin uh, that works with Viper has actually done by my team. Right. Uh, we've also done a plugin for OpenStack. So uh, all things that are tied to contexts that are unique to different application environments or even the OpenStack environment, uh, I'm the ecosystem enabler for uh, the Viper platform. Now, in terms of your question on performance, it's, we haven't really deployed this in, in a large scale, so I won't, I won't comment on that. But uh, in uh, our current testing in the lab, it, it hangs out pretty well. Uh, the key part is really time to solution. I can't emphasize that enough. Right. Uh, single click, writing application uh, integration capability uh, in a matter of hours, if not days, versus weeks. Uh, it's just great. I'm interested in, um, I mean the messaging is very strong uh, on software defined and, and generally in Viper specifically. And it's, I think it's clear benefits for a, a, a provider of storage you know, so solutions. I'm not sure the customers are, get it yet. Um, I think they get, get it conceptually, long term, but in terms of how to implement it. Your organization is almost like the bridge between the two. Um, what's your, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that this sort of software defines separating control plane from data plane, I mean, a lot of that's sort of geeky, and <laughs> although of course a lot of the customers are geeky too, I mean they, they like that stuff, but. You're you talking think, to one to yeah, ex-customer. Okay, yeah, so, so. Right, so, but, but <laughs> at the CIO level, they're probably like, what is that all about? I mean, why do I really need this? Do you, do you think they, they, they get it yet, or is that going to take some education, and what role will your group play? Yeah, again, fantastic question. I think there has to be an education of uh, what Viper is all about, but it is not exactly a, a, a new thing. It's an extension of uh, cloud computing as it was applied to compute. Mm -hmm. We are just extending that concept to the storage, and uh, in as much as uh, you know, vCloud and vCenter enable the orchestration and management of virtual machines, uh, we are enabling that same concept with storage, with uh, logical units, LUNs, and storage pools uh, with appropriate service levels that can be administered through this abstraction layer. So it's the exact thing that VMware has done to compute that we are now enabling with storage. And by the way, we are plugging it into VMware or you know, System Center or SAP or whatever the orchestration of your choice is. What's um, so, what's your... So I think it's an easy conversation to have. If, if you understood compute and server virtualization, you can step from there to this conversation. Yeah, you make it sound simple. <laughs> no, so. it, it, is, it is simple in concept, actually. It's an yeah. extension of what every CIO is salivating to do in terms of TCO reduction and time to solution. Well, I think when you talk to savvy technologists, you know, there's, there's always some new technology coming down the road. They say, yeah, there's always some new technology coming down the road. It's all about the processes. That's the, how we integrate it and exploit it. That's the, the real yeah, challenge. And the heavy lifting is really the actual deployment of, of, of Viper in the context of the application and the legacy environment of the CIO's IT environment, right? So uh, the technology is, is uh, elegant. Uh, the implementation, the onboarding of the apps, the testing of these use cases, the insurance of uh, performance, especially on data services like object on file that uh, Amit have talked about, uh, have to be proven in those unique scenarios. And our goal is to enable that with our POC solution centers, uh, with our eLab, and ensure that we create these Lego blocks based on if you're enterprise, you're running SAP this way, okay, this is the best known method or best practice for how Viper would fit in that environment. If you're a Microsoft shop uh, running Hyper-V, here's how that would work. If you're uh, a service provider who says, hey, I, I really want to deal with only OpenStack mm -hmm. and 
Cinder plugins on storage, well, we've got that too. So the idea is if I can create these reference architectures by specific environments and use cases, which is what I do today, right. but now tie with, tied with a much faster medium for integration, which is Viper, uh, I would then enhance the experience for the end user. Yeah, it is a big win for, for you. Now, what's your relationship within, within EMC with internal IT? Uh, we had Vic on uh, yesterday, <laughs> and of course, you know, We've had Sanjay on before. Let's just talk about that a little bit and then we got we to gotta wrap. Right, so Vic and, and Sanjay, obviously uh, I work very closely to them. Uh, we view IT as our first and best customer, so a lot of the solutions that we actually build, we socialize those solutions first with our own EMC IT. Because we believe that if those guys say, hey, this stuff is not going to go anywhere, we just stop right there. Mm -hmm. And so we have a joint forum that we have between me and the CIO, and, and we jointly look at our solutions in our portfolio, and we look at them as some kind of a litmus test on should we go forward or not. Now, they don't really implement all our solutions, but we want to get their mind share on every one of them that we invest in. So. All right, Prasad, listen, thanks very much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Okay, this is uh, theCUBE, our flagship program got the events. Start to see them from the noise. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Exclusive coverage from EMC World. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's coverage. We'll be right back. All right, guys.